What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another dynamic components tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how you can set materials inside of your dynamic components inside of SketchUp. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is my start to finish course for SketchUp where um, I really get in-depth teaching you how to use the program. So the course has over 14 hours of instruction as well as a community forum where you can ask questions and interact with other students and live coaching calls where we get on calls and we actually talk through some of your SketchUp issues. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, you want to take your SketchUp game to the next level, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the way the materials work with dynamic components is a little bit tricky. And so what we want to do first is let's go ahead and let's just create a cube. So we're just going to do a two foot by two foot cube. like this. And we're just going to take this and we're just going to make it a component and we're going to call it cube. So really simple. So what we want to do first is let's make it so we can dynamically change colors. So that's really easy because you can come in here to dynamic components, go to component attributes, and you can just select a material right here. And then you can just label that material. So in this case, if I was to type in red, for example, and hit the enter key, notice how the material in this object is now red. If I was to type in blue, then this cube would now be blue, right? So really easy to do. And so let's say that we wanted to make this so that there was a drop down where we could select colors, right? So all we would have to do is just use a little arrow right here. And under the display rule, you're going to click on the option for users can select from a list. And so when you do that, what that allows you to do is that allows you to create a list that they can choose from. So in this case, it's really easy. You just make the list options the colors that you want, right? So you're going to have an option for red. This is what your user is going to see. This is the value that it's actually going to read to display your color. So if we were to type in value of blue, you'd have a blue option, green, you'd have a green option. And then let's say we wanted a color based on a hex code like this. So let's say that instead of green, we were to type in hashtag FF0000. And we would click on apply. So now, instead of us typing in a value inside of our attributes, we could right click on this and click on the option for component options. And notice how our drop down is going to give us a selection. So we can click on these and then we can click on apply. I don't actually know if that hex code is green. It looks like the hex code is not green. So the problem with this though is this gets really tricky when you start working with materials, right? Because materials are referencing external files. So let's say for example that we wanted a cube and we'll just make another two foot by two foot cube. And we'll just select this one and we'll call it cube MAT for our cube materials. And so now the problem is this is a little bit tricky because if we were to add a material attribute right here, and in this case, let's say we were to type in the value of beadboard because that's the name of this material, and then hit the enter key, notice how this is going to give us an error message. And so now we've got this error where this says material not in model beadboard. That's because if we were to go over to the in model section of our materials section, notice how beadboard hasn't actually been imported into our model. It's sitting in our library, but it's not actually in the model. So this component doesn't know how to reference it. And so if we were to draw a surface like this and then add beadboard to that surface and then click on this. I'm just going to click on the button for refresh and it doesn't like that. This gets a little bit weird. So if I was to take this back out and just type in default and then type beadboard back in. Notice how now beadboard works because beadboard is contained inside of the model. And so what that means is that means this gets a little bit tricky when you're trying to set up your uh, when you're trying to set up your dynamic components for materials because you need to make sure that the materials that you need are packaged inside of those components. So in this case, let's say for example that we wanted to make a cube that had materials inside of it that we could bring into any SketchUp model. Right? So what we would have to do is we would have to Draw our cube, so two foot, comma two foot. 
we're going to make it a component and we're going to call it cube package. All right? And so right now, if we were to say that we wanted this to be the brick antique 01, for example. So if we were to add a material in here for brick antique 01, you're going to get that same error message. So if I type in brick antique 01, Notice how it says this material is not in the model. And so usually what you would end up doing is you would end up packaging the materials that you want as options inside of this model. So in this case, I could draw a surface like this and just apply Brick Antique 01. Now, this component is going to have Brick Antique 01 packaged inside of it. And so let's clear this out. So we're going to type in white, and then we're going to go back in and type Brick Antique 01. Notice how that works now because this is contained inside of this component. And so if we were to take this component and we're just going to save it as its own component. So we're going to do a save as and we'll just save this component as cube package. Well now if we were to create a new SketchUp model, which notice how it will not have that brick material in here. If we were to import, if we were to import that cube into SketchUp, I'm just going to drag it in like this. And then within our component attributes, we were to set the material to brick antique 01. And notice how I had to type in white and then go back to brick antique 01 to get that to work. We'll talk more about that in a second too. Um, but notice how now this can bring this in even inside of a new SketchUp model because the material is already contained inside of it. And so let's take that a little bit further. So let's say that we wanted to create something and we'll call it two foot by two foot foot tall and let's say that we wanted to have this we wanted this to have multiple materials that we could pick from right so we're just going to take this we're going to make it a component and I'm going to call it cube pick because it's going to be something where we can pick the materials well inside of that cube I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some swatches of materials that I want to be able to pick from right because I want to be able to bring this in wherever and so we're just going to add maybe Brick Antique 01, we're going to add Brick Rough Dark, we're going to add Brick Rough Tan, and we're going to add Brick Tumbled. And so what we want to do in this situation is remember how before we came in here and we selected Material? Well, now we want to select Material, but we want to give the option for users can select from a list. And then we're just going to add these in, right? So usually what I do is I like to just uh, sample them and then copy the name and then paste it in here. That way I don't have any like spelling errors or anything like that. I just get the actual name really easily. And you do need to make sure that it's actually filling out the value on the right hand side to match the material name. But now, whoops, we're just going to add all four of these and click on apply. Well now, if we were to right click on this from outside of the box and under dynamic components, go to component options. Notice how I'm going to have a drop down in here where I can apply the different materials. And it's going to see the materials because I've packaged them inside of this dynamic component. And so in this case, probably what I would do is I would either group all of these. So take them as a group and then hide them, maybe like underneath my object and then right click and do a hide or something like that. But now, if I was to save this as its own component, so we'll do a save as, we'll save this as cube pick, and then bring that into a new file. So I'm just gonna drag this in from Windows Explorer. Well now, if I right click on it and go to my component options, I can apply different materials right here. And notice how I did have to select something and apply it the first time in order to get something placed on this object. But this gives you the ability to basically package up a bunch of materials inside of a component that can be brought in anywhere. And then one other thing I want to talk about real quick is I want to talk about, let's say that we wanted something similar to this. So I'm going to come in here and do an Let's say we had something where we had multiple objects inside of a group, right? So I'm going to do a two foot by two foot cube. I'm going to make a copy of it. And so let's say we wanted to have multiple picks in here. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take the whole thing. 
I'm going to make this a component. And I'm going to say cube multi for the name. And so let's say we wanted to have two drop downs in here that would apply to each one of these. So what we'd have to do is we would have to have each one of these cubes, so I'm going to call this cube one, be separate components inside of our overall component. So I'm going to call this one cube two. So if I click on this, notice how there's an option up here for cube multi, and then options for cube one and cube two. And so what I want to do is I want to set this where I have an option for cube one and an option for cube two. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we package our materials in here. So we're just going to do the same thing so that these materials are contained inside of this swatch. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to add two attributes, right? So, and I want to make them custom attributes. Um, so I don't want them to be anything that's in here. I just want these to be something that basically represents cube one and cube two. So I'm going to type cube one material. That's basically creating a custom variable for cube one material. And then for the second one, we're going to create a custom variable for a cube two material. And so what I want is I want to give a drop down in here for each one of these. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to do this users can select from a list. And then I'm going to go add these real quick. I'm going to speed this piece up because it's going to take a little while. All right, so now these are the options for the display label cube one material. And so I want the display label on this to just be cube one material. And so what that's going to do, if I apply this, is this is going to give me a drop down list of materials for cube one material. And notice how right now nothing is happening other than if I apply this, it's passing the name of the material to cube one material. So now what I can do is within cube one, I can set the material behavior to be equal to by typing in equals and then clicking on this right here. So now what we have is we have a drop down that's allowing us to set the material for cube one that's just passing that variable to the other object. And so now let's say we want to do the same thing for cube two. We would just let users select from a list and we'll just do the same thing. We'll just change the label to cube to material and click on apply. Well, now we just need to link our cube to material to this object right here. So now what I have is I have a dynamic component with options where I can set my cube one material separately from my cube two material because we're just using variables in order to pass this along to set the material of our object. So then finally, we would just come in here, we would just make this a swatch. So we could just make it a group, hide it, but it's still gonna be in there. So if you import this into a new um, SketchUp file, the materials still exist inside of that file. So let me know if you'd like me to get more in depth on these features. Um, I can definitely do that in a future video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're interested in learning how to use SketchUp from start to finish, make sure you check out my course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. I'd love to get you on those live calls, talk about SketchUp with you. Um, it's just a lot of fun. So, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.